There are quite a number of people who are not interested in voting this year. A lot of the youth, they are not interested. And for some people who are actively working, you know, they are too busy. They don't want to get involved. I did a survey. I went on the streets. I asked people a direct question. Who are you voting for this year? Out of 1,000 people, 299 said they are going to vote for John Mahama. 198, 198 of them said they are voting for Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. And surprisingly, 158, I think, Whoa. well, no, 150, 150, exactly 150 said they are voting for Nana Kwame Mediakon. Why is you excited? I'm excited because you're making numbers, you're making waves. Hold on, hold on. But the chunk of the people, more than 400 or so, said they are not voting for anybody. They are not going to vote. Now, my question to you guys is, why should people wake up, go queue up, stand in the sun for hours in some places and vote? What, what, what do you make of that? Let me start with you. Much appreciated. All right. I believe that we are citizens of the country. Mm. And if you want something to go well, you need to, pay, you need to sacrifice for it. And as citizens of the country, if you don't get up and pay the price of you standing in the sun to vote a leader you believe in to come to power, what do you expect will happen? Somebody will vote for you. Mm -hmm. And, and put in a, a person you may not like. That's the thing. Okay. So in order for no sound to dictate for you, you, have the you are the liberty to get up, go and vote the leader you want to govern you. So for people who be, who have to study or who have to travel like for hours and go back to their hometowns to vote, people who have to spend money, what would you say to them? They have to spend money, go back to Central Region, Kumasi, Takrade, before you vote. So this is the thing that happened. Mm. Recently, there were news uh, moving out that you can transfer your... A lot of people didn't transfer theirs. Some did, though. Some did. I know a qu quite a number of people. They are all, most of them have made up their minds to vote. But they will tell you, I have to go all the way to Kumasi to vote. John, yeah. what do you make of this? Why should people vote? Thank you very much for this question. And first of all, voting is our legal right, mm. which is stated in the 1992 Constitution. Mm. Secondly, we are in a democratic country. Okay. Thirdly, it is human beings currently we need to select our leader, not God. Mm. So it is our right, our responsibility for us to elect somebody who is going to lead us. Because without a leader, in every country we need a leader. And then the leader doesn't come from God. Even God selects the leader through us. So we need to vote. So no matter the, situ the situation, the circumstances around you, you should vote. Because if you are not voting, who should go and vote so that we elect a leader? So how do you respond to a person who says, I have to board a bus for four hours to Ashanti region and pay 100 Ghana cities in, 100 Ghana cities out. What would you say to that person? Okay. Th that is why I believed in um, the former president, J.J. Rawlings. If you want to register, go back to your hometown and register. Because we don't do our registration in our hometowns, we don't even think about our hometowns. Now, everybody wants to move to Accra. Now, I'm in Accra, maybe my hometown is in the central region. Because I don't register there and I'm in Adabraka, I think Adabraka is okay and my hometown is suffering. That is one thing we should know that whether, where you are, if you think it's too far, before they do the transfer, once you get to know that there's vote transfer, you should, as fast as you can, you should go and do that. And if you think you can't vote, you don't even think you can't vote, it's a must. You should try your possible best. Go to wherever you come from, wherever you registered, go and vote and vote for a leader who is going to lead Ghana to a transformation. Uh, Dixon, for those who say, why would I go and vote when perhaps my vote will not matter? The person who is going to win is still going to win anyway. Even if I don't vote for the person, the person may still win. Some would also say, so I have to spend my money to put somebody's father in an office and the, the, that person comes in, makes the economy so hard, and then I suffer. What would you say to people like this? Much appreciated. Mm. Politically, there are three kinds of people. 
the one who's concerned about what's going on, the one who doesn't care about what is going on, and the one who is pa- a partaker of what is going on. From where the question is coming from, we are speaking about a person who doesn't concern, who has no concern about what is going on. Okay. This kind of person has his ideology. Some religious dogma prevents some people from voting. Yes, people like in the uh, is it is it the. Uh, uh, seven days Seven days. No, 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 no. They, I think they vote. Jehovah Witnesses. The Jehovah Witnesses. They don't. People to find it nose diving. Right. To go and vote for somebody so that to become a leader over him or her. Some people don't like to be governed. Though. They don't want to even see people like that giving orders. You get it. So I believe that a ship can never move if there's no captain. So as a partaker of all. Po- of political things in my country, I believe that it's necessary, it's advisable that as an individual, you happen to live in a country. Yeah. And if you go to this, when you, I'm trying to make a relation with the sea here. When you're having a ship, there's a captain that owns the ship, and you're on board on that ship. So if the captain who is driving the ship doesn't know, who is sailing the ship, doesn't know where he's going to, all of you are lost. So in order not to have someone who is, uh, who is in order to get a captain sailing to where he or she doesn't know, why don't you take it upon yourself and vote someone you believe is credible for this? And what of if people say, and we did that, we've been doing that since 1992, what has it gotten us? We are still where we are. No, John, we, we are still not where we are. Aren't we where we are? Never. We've no, moved? No, yes, we've moved. From where to where? In within t- 2008, there was nothing like flyover. Now we have it in the country, so we, we, are, we, are, we are never still where we are. 2008, we had nothing like UGMC hospital, but now we have. So there has been a move. But as you are expecting, is what you haven't seen. I expect that my father will give me 50 Ghana cities. My father will give me 30 Ghana cities. It doesn't mean my father is not making an effort. My father gave me the money. But what I was expecting is not what I've gotten. But yes, he has made a move. Okay. So we can expect that, oh, we haven't gotten there. But we are still moving. We are still moving. But the only problem is that the rate at which we are moving is too slow. That is the only thing I can see. People say, oh, maybe I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry, no, I'm going to see you. No, you shouldn't say that. I always ask people, your tax that you've paid since the day you were born till now, maybe it's can't even build three, maybe three, maybe three rooms for school students to even stay inside. It shows that no matter the situation, we are moving forward, but maybe it doesn't go with your expectation. You go and vote. That's why you should vote for somebody you think can help solve the problem. Who do you think can help solve the problem? Maybe I think it's Cheddar. So I, sh- I, I will sit down there. I will not vote. Someone will go and vote for maybe Dr. Laj Mahmoud Baumia, and I will be saying he's not doing it. It's because I didn't vote for the person who I think can lead Ghana. So you should go and vote so that we bring somebody who we think can lead the country. So asking the, that question, you know, referring back to your question, who do you think will be the right guy to be in office moving forward from 2025? <laughs> Because we have 13 people on that list. Yeah. 13 strong men and women. Yes. So with the 13 strong men and women, the facts is checked. The facts is cross-checked. Everything is done. Only four people are counted. The rest of them, they are aware. They know. That's the fact. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Out of the 13, you say what? Only we four. Are four. If four. You go to town, four. Who are the, those John Dramani Mahama, uh-huh. Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumi, uh-huh. Sheda, and Alan. Alan. Really? People. Maybe, hold on, hold on. Don't them. you think, <laughs> don't you think perhaps you, you are looking at the wrong sources for information? Uh-huh. So if the, you keep watching TV3, yeah. what do you expect to see? You, you see, see things that are... Four, yeah. mm, maybe if you turn it to Metro TV or you watch something else, you may see something totally different. So you think, um, assuming my own CPP, mm. My own CPP, they are aware they are not winning this election. They are aware. So you don't think they are a factor? No, I, I'm saying they are part of the election. No, no. You don't think they are going to, you know, get any substantial numbers? They will get numbers, but they are, but they are not close to that 50.1%. Dixon, is it only four? No. Major four? Yeah, I don't see major four. You I see one and the rest. You see what? One <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> Explain that part. The one is number 12. I don't quite believe that. And the rest. So it's Nana Kwame against the 12. <laughs> Why? Okay. Why I'm saying this is... You are aware there is an incumbent government. Yes. I know. And the largest I opposition party in DC. I know they are all existing. Okay. But when I say one, mm-hmm. and the rest, 
we've seen what the certain government has done. We've seen what the opposition government have done. We know what we are capable of doing. Right. But looking at the new force, we have evidence from the business system. We know what we are capable of doing. And if you know that if you give us the country, if you give us a chance to become leaders of this country, we are going to make Ghana just not, not just move. Because I realized that these people, these two ruling parties, are full of touches. Mm. And they want to celebrate movers. Nana Kwambida could say mover. So give him the chance and we will move. I and see. So it's one against 12. Mm -hmm. All right. Talking about your four against, yeah. uh, is it nine? Yeah. Four against nine. So what do you make of a, a, a candidate like Kofi Krantin? Mr. Kofi Krantin, mm. I know the man, I seem to have met him before. The man himself, he should be fair with himself. He has good policies. But looking at our system now and the kind of people we have in this country, Mr. Kofi Krantin is aware that 2024, he's not going to become a president. He's aware. And then 90.9. .9. You are saying to Kofi Krantin, he's, yes, he's, not, he's not aware. Listen, <laughs> I've interviewed him right here. He sat in that chair. Yeah. The, the very chair you are sitting in. Yeah. And he said to me, Cyrus, we are winning in this election. There is nobody that goes to a yeah. battle. No, so that, so that for and that believes he's going to, to lose. Mr. Cyrus, mm. there is one thing that we have to do as a country. What is that? Speaking truth to power. But he's not in power. No, I'm saying let's speak truth to power to the elderly, no matter the situation. What is the truth here? The truth here is that currently, mm -hmm. that's why I was telling you something before this interview, that there are some people we have to change their perception, change their mind before we get to where we want to get to. Currently, someone will stand in Kumasi and tell you that, Nakinjit Ya Market, in Kwaya Diede. Meanwhile, he's someone, he's selling inside the market. He's telling you that there are some people who still don't want to change the way they think, the way they do their no thing. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Right. They still want to go by the old norm. On a flyover quiet bedding. That's how they think. No, so this year, are you voting personally? Personally, I'm not voting. Ah, <laughs> you are contradicting yourself. You just told us a few minutes ago that it is it is constitutional for everybody to go and vote. So people should drive all the way to Kumasi, whatever the case may be. The reason why I'm not voting is because after doing my registration, we did the registration, they did another registration. And when I did the registration, I went back there to verify. And I was told that uh, I was supposed to vote. I was taken to my old place, which was Modano Senior High School, around that area. I told them that this is not, that's not where I registered. So we had to go, go come, go do this thing, and I'm in Accra. So the, it's not that I'm supposed to vote and I'm not voting. That's the thing. So there is a technical problem. Yes. With your voter ID card or yeah, some so registration. It means that if, if I'm supposed to vote, I was supposed to write a letter to Electoral Commission. Why so didn't you go and days. rectify it when they opened up the window to I had to, to go to my hometown. I went there. They would tell they, I was told to go to the Electra something something office and go and do some stuff. You go there. So looking at how the situation was going. So I had to write a letter. So currently we are still on it. But if I'm given the chance to vote, and then according to the constitution, per what uh, I've some deliberations and some chat I had with some officials from they uh, they told me that if I want to, if I'm ready to vote on that day, I can come and vote. If you so are if willing to vote on yes, that day, yes, you can walk in. Yes. So if I go and I'm permitted, why not? I'll cast my vote. Who would you vote for? Oh, that's that's personal. That's personal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 People are people are people are so scared of giving out information about who they are voting for. Is it personal to you too? Me, there's nothing personal to me. So who are you voting for? Why? Why? Because I know what he stands for. He's capable of what he can he's saying. That's all? I know okay. Another thing is that Are you voting this year? I am voting. Okay. I hope you also don't have a technical problem with your it, your it, registration. It, I'll find a way of registering. Because I can't sit down and sit down under these same old faces who are gambling with our future here. Mm. Let's be honest with ourselves. We've seen these people gamble with our future since, like mm. since the nineties. Now we are still we are, we are going to sit down and watch them gamble about our future again. I'm thinking about our next coming generation. What is the plan for next coming generation? So you are voting. I'm voting. Okay, and you are voting for Nana Kwame. All right. So what, what is your, now that you are you may or may not vote. I will vote. You will vote? If I go and then why That not is I if. Vote. 
So but you I ask, will go there that you day. go there that day. Fine. Yes. Next, uh, after no, is, uh, is it is it seven days more? Nine days more. Nine days more. We have nine days more to vote. Yes. What do you expect the outcome to be? How do you see the outcome of this year's election? Be very objective. Put aside your biases. Put aside your prejudice. Put aside your preferences. Be very objective. Who do you think will win by the tenth of December, when the EC comes out? Who, whose name will be mentioned first? Well, as I'm sitting here, uh -huh. I haven't done any statistics to check. But looking at the system, okay, if we are looking at our situation, and then we are voting, Doctor Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia should go home and do his homework and come back next time. <laughs> what? If you are looking at the current situation, uh huh. Now, an economic messiah, now an IT personnel. Uh. Now, he works with Play Store, uh, um, Play Store and then App Store. No, you told me you're economic something, something, something. If you're looking at the current situation and we are voting. The MPP candidate should go home and do his homework. Yes, if we are looking at the current situation. Okay. Okay. The books he read and the things he knew, maybe in the refi, Uncle Sian on Samra. Wow. 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 Okay, so you don't want to mention the name of the guy you are voting for. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you are but also saying, hold on, hold on. Course. But you are saying Dr. Mahamudu Baumia should go home and revisit his books. Yes, so that's. So that, me that takes Baumia out. It leaves behind twelve candidates. Yes. All right. So let's let's do the magic. Out of the twelve, I want to see if I can, you know, work on your mind and get the candidate you may possibly vote for. You have per your own statement, yeah. four of them four. are the major ones. Yeah. You've you've on your own taken one out. Yes. So you are left with three. Yeah. So here in this case, you are you are either voting for. Uh, John Dramani Mahama, yes. Nana Kwan Bediako, yeah. or Alan Shremantin. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you are voting for one of these three. Yes. All right. All right. But do you want to tell us who you speculate to say this person is most likely to win this year's election? Would you want to give us a name? I, 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 I can't give a direct name. Okay. But what I can say is that the three of them left. I believe in anything they are doing. Look at the new force. People see a lot of things about Cheddar. He's a scammer. He's this. Let him come and scam us and build Ghana for us. If somebody is going to build Ghana, it's going to be a scammer. Then it's better than somebody who come as a messiah and come and scam us. Mm, I like this one. That is that. that is, and then talking about Alan Kujo Chairman team, we know a lot of things. Kufo told us that seventy percent of what he did was from Alan. Kufour told us in Ghana that 70% of his ideas came from Alan. And the same Kufour just said recently yes. that uh, Alaji Mahamud Baumia is the best candidate among all of them. That is why now he's like in the Japan, I can't have any confidence in the two of them again. Kufour now, for me personally, I can't trust the man again. I see. I can't even trust Honorable Kennedy. I can't with Japan. Is somebody the I same thing love. here. Yes, I, I don't. I used I, to campaign for that man. Yes, because now one day it took one day to lose all the respect, all the belief, everything I have for that man. It just disappeared. Yes, because you told me the person you are the person you are better than the person, and now you are telling us that he's not better than you. So we should vote for the person. How do you tell us this, Dixon? Dixon, yes, sir. be honest with me, very honest. Who do you see winning this year's election? Before I give you my answer, uh. a society mm. that separates its scholars from its warriors, who have its thinking done by fools and its fighting done by cowards. What are you saying? I'm trying to say that a society that separates its thinkers from its warriors, from warriors will have what? Its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. Okay, what does that mean? I'm saying this because. We know the facts from time to come. We know what these big parties are doing already. We know what they are capable of doing. We know that when it's election year, they have what it takes to get the people to vote for them. Yeah. 
But when they are in power, do they do what they promise? No. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Nana kwa mbele yako. Was a businessman. Still, it still is. He's still a businessman. Yeah. What will cause? What particular thing will cause a businessman to stop living his lavish life? Somebody may say he, he's greedy. He wants to get more. He wants to use the office to, to acquire more wealth for himself. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> An army of lions, being led by a sheep. What is the difference between an army of sheep being led by a lion? What are you saying in this case? I'm saying here that I'm not going to be there for a leader. He's not a talker. Mm. He's a mover. He, he brings results. When you act, you see results. From business now to politics, he's not even doing politics, he's doing leadership. This was what this was this what is called leadership. So are you also saying Nanako is winning? He's winning. The reason why I say he is winning is because I know what he's doing. If Ghanaians should be honest with ourselves, and let's stop playing this and be playing this game. We can make Ghana a better place than we came to meet it, hands down. We can make Ghana a better place. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like Ghanaians, we are we are introduced to the system that, oh, I sat down and I did an analysis and I realized that Ghana's problem is these three things: tribalism, illiteracy, and fear. Tribalism, illiteracy, and fear. And fear. And Reli the most religion, thing, religion. The most painful thing in addition is the uh, mental slavery. We are suffering now. If someone is born into a house of MPP people. Automatically, the person must vote for MPP. But it happens everywhere in the world. No, we should change our narrative. I'm in Asante region, so definitely I'm supposed to. I'm in the Vota region. I'm in the Northern region. It happens in most part of the world. That's what I don't understand today. It should change. It should change. Maybe the person likes the guy, oh. likes the candidate. He thinks the candidate is doing a fantastic yeah, job. Listen. There are NDC people who are saying John Mahama has solutions to Ghana's problems. And they are saying it with full confidence because they say he did it in the first four years. He was given authority. So if you allow him the second time, he's going to do a tremendous job. Who, what would you say to such a person? Mm. Why? And when? Why what? And when what? Why would you vote for somebody who came to Ghana? You, you, were, you were all in Ghana here. Nobody left Ghana when Mama was in power. Right. Everybody know what Ghana was going to do. Right. You'll be there working. Power up, power, do so. That is the thing. But they will still say he solved it at the latter part. He solved what? The, the doom so. Let me tell you something. You he know, brought in all the bodies. Yeah, you know uh, but that is a fact. You know Togo up there. Yeah. You know he owns a plant in this Ghana here. He, nothing stops him from owning uh, it. Then do you know that he's part of those people who contribute to power in Ghana here? No, but the, the fact of the matter is the power badges that came in, they were all brought in by John Mahama. It wasn't it brought by John Mahama. Let's do something, put my name on it. Someone should do something, let me put my name on it. It's easy. All right, so what would you say, uh, John, yeah. for people who say Mahama has answers? Because I see the competition, I'll be very honest with you. I see the competition between John Mahama and the new force, I, I honestly don't put. Dr. Mahamudu Baumia in the competition. So the, the, the two of them. Right. Why so would why should someone yeah. not vote for John Mahama and vote for Nanako Ami instead? You see, one thing is I believe in anything that Nanako Ambediako is doing. And then I think all the youth, like from 18 years and above, let's give our support to this guy. I think that one we have to do it. That's one we have to do it. But I'm looking at currently, now, as in Ghana now, how it is going to be possible and how come Bidiaku wins this election. Looking at how people are doing, even campaign with uh, ethnic groups. Someone will go and say, and I say, what to Obama? We are Muslim, not to Obama, Christian, we are Haram. Some of these things they are doing. What is the main problem of Ghana? What they are doing, they are doing something against the peace of Ghana. And then I am sometimes afraid why the National Peace Council, the police service, they are there. And some of these things are some of these things go every single day. They they, they arrested Ohineba from Moon to Me TV. Just within the week. That was within Saturday or Sunday. And then within the week, Nana B will still go and sit on the same station and be saying the same thing. Are we in Ghana? 
So I believe that currently we need a change. We need somebody who can help. Let's stop that thing of and now we there and as this that. Let's look for practicable solution. Who is going to help us? I'm always of the view that let us put everything aside. Let's put our political affiliations, our religion aside, and let's think about Ghana. If there is no peace in Ghana, if no no one, if the leader is not somebody who's going to put Ghana first, you can't even go to your church. The radio station you are even running, you can't even run. That's why sometimes I'm, I'm even having problem with some people who don't see anything bad with this government, government who don't hear anything bad. Like my own senior person, I trust so much in this media, Mr. Paul Adamotri. What has Paul Adamotri done? He's a man I respect so much. He's very learned, but I don't like somebody who will always be there to cover the truth. You think he's covering the truth? Ah, but we were here in Ghana. When Abroni went to sit on the television station and called former president John Dramani Mahama to wipe that he's a witch. They told we were here in Ghana where they said Professor Jenano Bukatima is a is a witch. He's at least she's a woman. Let's give that that respect. Let's forget about insult. You see, sometimes let's think like we are human. If just is it today or yesterday, President John Dramani Mahama met um uh Baumia and they shook hands and they were walking peacefully. You'll be in Bono, you are fighting somebody in Accra. Because you have bando, because you have this, because you think the country is for you. See, the way we have portrayed things, you have given power to people and then they want to abuse their power. In Africa, power drunk leaders. Somebody will stand on the stage and say, I will never hand over power. I will never hand over power. As if Ghana is his personal property. It is for us. Allow us to vote <laughs> and vote for somebody we want to. Ah, we want somebody to lead us and you are telling us that this is what you, you want. It's kind of for your father. This is for your mother. It's for us all. So if you want new force, let's vote for new force. If you want uh, Jomahama, let's we want Baume, let's vote. I think we should allow Ghanaians to vote who they want to vote into power. Let's stop imposing people on Ghanaians. I see. Interesting stuff. We are bringing it to an end. This is a very short one. Dixon, on the day of elections, a lot of things happen. People claim that votes are stolen. People actually vote. For instance, I saw a video on uh, TikTok where there was a, uh, I think he was a researcher or something. A man was demonstrating how votes on the pink sheet, which actually are on the pink sheet, but when they are totaling the votes, by the time they add up all the votes, the numbers are reduced by hundreds and given to others. So people are afraid of vote stealing in this country. And I'm looking at Anakwa Mbedi and his chances. He's fresh. The people who are going to represent him at the polling stations are inexperienced, most of them. They don't know where to look. So as a fresh person who is inexperienced with an inexperienced leader, what do you think should be our major concern? Because People are asking for, you know, where the people, who are those people going to represent him at the police? People are asking. People who love him. People who have campaigned for him, including myself. Yeah. We don't want to campaign in vain. We don't want our efforts to be in vain. Yeah. So, what do you think should be the case when it comes to people watching out, not allowing votes to be stolen, people being careful and watchful, and not being bought with money, influenced with money, and all that kind of stuff. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Mr. Sarah. Mm. When you're speaking, I discovered two problems right now that make this thing I think likely to happen. Lift up your voice a little bit. When you're speaking, uh -huh. I discovered two things that is going to make what you're saying likely to happen. Okay. Number one, in Ghana we have, it's like, I'm referencing to um, a jungle game. In a jungle we have a predator and we have the prey. Mm. The new force in this political game in Ghana is, is a prey. Mm. We have predators there who hold the system already, yeah. who knows the nitty gritties of the game already. The reason why it's going to happen is because we are coming fresh. They are going to play the bad thing with us. And you know we're going to play the bad thing with us. They're going to use Nana Kwame Diakon's past life. 
be very be expecting this very thing. They're going to bring his past life. No, but I'm not even talking about that part. I'm talking about the day of elections. The day of elections. How election? A, a message that came today, mm. and this is what around 2:44 p.m. from the new force. It was through an SMS, and it reads, and it does waba. Dear new force member, we are at the crossroads. The time has come for us to protect what we have worked so hard for. In light of this, we are falling on you as our most trusted members to marshal us to if the si if this sits well with you and would like to volunteer to be a polling agent, kindly send by SMS or WhatsApp your full name, contact number, and voter type number to blah, 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 blah by the close of by close of today, um, by the close of the day, Friday 29th by close in force. So this is officially coming from where? The new, the new force. force. You sure it's officially from you the new force? Yes. New force? Because some of these other political parties can put up that yes. strategy. They they do that. And then use that same uh, voter's ID card so number. If it's, if it's and do things. Yeah, to take it out of the system. So yeah. that you it's get there, your, your, your details it's are not even in forced. the system. Looking at the time we are asking for volunteers to be polling agents, I think people don't know. So eventually they'll be found wanting on this. But why, why have they waited till now? I believe that if it's the source this message is coming from is legit, then it could be as a result of the uh, regional tour, 2564. tour. That's why the message is coming out. But I think they can, they can, they can still uh, educate the people. Bring them on board. Educate them. Do this, do that, do this, do that, do this. They get there and, and they can protect the ballot. To be honest, if you're ready to learn, people are ready to listen. Oh, yeah, yeah, they will learn. So the leaders of the new force should go get these people there, these polling agents, educate them, let them go. I know the bigger parties will try and do things. Try but when they're educated, they also... But I'm also praying that this election, I just fear about two things. Mm. Two things. Electricity Company of Ghana. They had my biggest fear this election. And the internet. They are my <laughs> biggest fear in this coming election. Electricity Company of Ghana. ECG is telling us that we should buy prepaid for one month period because they are going to do some something on their prepaid. So we should buy. So how, so how many people can afford that one month thing? What is your second fear? Ghana Police Service. Ghana police service. Now, you see, it, it looks like our people don't even have trust in our uh, this military, this police, this thing. It is election. And then they are the front line. They are the first people to protect everything, to bring peace and stability. We are not expecting them to go there and act like full soldiers. We are not expecting them to go there and be defending their political parties. We are expecting them to act like patriotic citizens who are there to protect the peace and the stability of Ghana. And then the political parties, let's stop this vigilantism. Don't go and bring any soldier. Don't go and dress people, these things. Stop all those things. You see, when we were voting in the USA, it was so nice. They are voting and it's counting. By the time we realize it's peaceful. Ever since they declared Donald Trump as the winner, I've never even heard the woman speaking. It is even peaceful. Everything is going on smooth. In Ghana here, we are expecting the same thing. So the Ghana Police Service, the, uh, the electricity company of Ghana, and then the political parties, these three people, these three, they are our biggest fear. They should act. They should know that the peace of Ghana should be paramount above all things. Because if there's no peace, your president cannot even lead. I see. Your final words, uh, Dixon. Fellow Ghanaians, let's be honest with ourselves. We've seen water, we've seen wine. Let us try the word. I entreat you to give the new force the opportunity to come and turn the narrative. If not anything, think about your children's future. We have seen what the MPP have done, we have seen what the NDC has done. It's hard time Ghanaians. We release ourselves from this mental slavery of this existing political parties and embrace the change. And that's on our banner. It's for a better Ghana. It's hard time we stop parties, we stop this tribal tribal politics, this normal dogma we know. Uh, uh, tribalism, uh, he's from this place of mine, and my father is MPP, so I'm MPP. Let's think about the future of Ghana. And I entreat you to vote for Nana Kwambadiakon and the new force. 
We are ready to walk the talk, so give us a chance. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Your final words, John? My final words to Ghanaians. I said, Ghanaian, do your best for yourself and your country. Be a citizen. Go and cast your vote for the person you think can lead Ghana. Do not allow somebody to give you 100 Ghana cities, 50 cities, 200 Ghana cities, because your future is at stake. Your children must get good jobs to do, and you yourself, you must have a stable life. Because if your life is stable, you can live a better life. Vote and vote wisely. Let's vote and vote for the leader we want. And then make sure that this election, it will be peaceful. Don't allow somebody to give you some money, go and do something. That will distract the peace and stability of Ghana. Because maybe you have an NDC member, you have an MP, but I, I don't have anybody. What I have is Ghana. Let us put Ghana first above all things as citizens. Thank you very much, folks. We'll come your way again with another one. This is just the beginning of what is going to happen on Tuntum Network moving forward. If you are interested in coming to the studio and being a part of this, DM me. My number is in the bio. If you want to be a part, maybe you want to talk about politics, religion, business, lifestyle. It's all open. We can take up to four people at a time. So let me hear from you, guys. Thank you so much for being a part, and thank you guys for coming. Thank we'll come your way again very soon. Until then, God bless you, and it's bye-bye for now.